Well, well, well. It's Saturday, March 30th, noon Eastern time. I am Bob Eric. And it's time for the weekly Ask Me Anything live stream. Before we get to your questions, footballguys.com. That's the website. I appreciate you joining me here uh, every Wednesday, every Saturday at this time, and also on Wednesdays for the On the Hot Seat. Uh, if you missed Wednesday night, uh, the mighty tank poll vote, Nate poll vote uh, from uh, Fantasy Pros, Raz Ball, the Fantasy Football Dynasty diehards uh, helped me get a grip on the uh, incoming rookie class and carry the load during some tech issues. We'll hope we don't have those today. Um, great show, though, so check that out. Nate is always awesome. And we'll be focusing a little more on the rookies. That's not going to be my focus today. Um, I'll focus on some other things, mostly your questions as we're here. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Once you've completed those uh, YouTube-ish tasks, uh, hit the like button. That's another one. Like, I make all these demands. Please, please hit the buttons. They need to be hit. Uh, if you want, don't have to hit them. Nobody has to. Uh, before we get into this, uh, you know, too deeply here. Uh, good morning, Troy. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Um, just want to throw out, uh, you know, how are you? Oh, yeah, more likes. Uh, who knows how the algorithm works? Um, some stuff going on, football guys. You know, catch my uh, I'm doing a weekly video on news and uh, just kind of ca quick catch up on the top stuff, like 10 minutes or less, uh, and kind of run through some of my favorite stories of the week. Uh, and so, uh, you can check that out on the football guys. I'll be doing more there. Good morning, James. Nice to see you. Um, and, and I just want to throw out there, uh, who is usually here, is having a medical procedure done today. She won't make it. So everyone thinks positive thoughts. Uh, maybe she watch the replay, throw some comments in, wishing her well. Um, uh, great part of the uh, of this uh, this group we have here. And uh, seen her drafts a little bit. I did some uh, drafts with, uh, there were some drafts on the uh, Fantasy and Frames uh channel this week i was uh involved in one of them is covering it last sunday night uh with uh with uh casey perez and eric Walton and keith Fleming covered a couple more and they were great drafts i watched them all it is uh o'clock something o'clock i watched all the drafts they were great i uh, love the drafts this time of year there's so so much intrigue so much we can you know kind of work through and and you know, start building our baselines of information. Obviously, we're all doing that as we head into drafts. Uh, thanks, Scampers. I appreciate it. It's a you know great opportunity for me to get a little more. Also, check out my fantasy notebook every Monday, available at Football Guys. Um, uh, and and that's good. Tons of good content there, as you all probably know, and uh, good people as well. I love working with some of my really old friends, Matt Waldman, Sigma Bloom, Cecil Lammy, Joe Bryan, of course, and and making some great new friends. Uh, Love Kluge and Alfredo and Jagger Bay. Just like I'm starting throwing out names. Coleman, Bell, uh, Williams, Zare. Just so much, you know, so many great people there that I get behind the scenes people too. So it's been fantastic. And so uh, uh, like, I like the, I like the little room here. Hello, Kevin. Nice to see you. And yeah, again, positive thoughts for Andrea for sure. Uh, I'll be checking in with her and uh, telling her everyone was saying hi. So hope you're a... Uh, Hope you're oh, we're, we're rooting for you. Uh, and hope to see you here back week. And Jim for you. Let making sure everyone knows he's back. Jim, Jim was gone for a little while out there traveling, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, so the the, the news overview is kind of fun thing, and, and we'll start getting a little more news here this week. We got teams starting on Tuesday. Uh, I think three teams, the Chargers, who else? Are there three teams that are starting up their OTAs this week? Uh, it's the Chargers, Falcons, the Commanders, new coaching staff. And this is their off-season workout program. It's not, not like practices or anything. Uh, the Panthers, Patriots, Seahawks, Titans, they start Monday, April 8th. Everything, everybody else waits until April 15th. Uh, we have three phases. It starts out, you know, with just some meetings and things like that, then some weights and stuff like that. And then uh, they'll have multiple weeks of organized team activities and a mandatory mini camp coming after, you know, later after the draft. So, a lot going on there. We'll start getting news and tidbits and information. This is the time of year you start hearing like, oh, and he had a cleanup procedure. So always one of my favorite times of year to find out, you know, some of the players. And, you know, I keep thinking there's a handful of guys. Like, I, you know, I don't think Tony Pollard had a cleanup. But like, you know, am I going to be shocked if Travis Nelson had something cleaned up? I mean, 
I mean, I'm not expecting it, right? But this is that time of year when you start hearing those things. Maybe some of the players that maybe we saw that struggled or didn't live up to expectations or whatever. I always keep an eye out on that and kind of try to see what's going on, you know, and try and figure out, if I, you know, what are the things we like to do is like, who, who, who came up short last year? Okay, why? And if I can come up with a plausible why, well, I'm going to put them on a list of players that I'm looking to get at a better price this year, right? Because they disappointed people last year. I mean, you're going to get them at a better price if they disappointed people. I'd like to have a reason to believe they could get better, right? I mean, that's part of the equation, whether it's new coaching staff, staff a new team, new pieces in the supporting cast, um, an injury issue that maybe we were previously unaware of or didn't know the severity of. Uh, so all that going on. If you didn't watch my video on football guys, go ahead and watch that. Talk about Josh Jacobs, really interesting situation for him. Uh, I think in that, you know, Matt LaFleur said this he really wants to do more work in the past game. He's been a pretty accomplished receiver. I know he's not looking about that. Uh, yeah. Like that scampers. Exactly. Those kind of things. I mean, like every year there's probably, I want to say like, you know, at least 10 things like, Oh yeah. Clean up on this. Oh, really? Maybe that explains something. Maybe not, right? Like, but it's another. You know, this is the this is the game. People gathering up all the little scraps of information that come our way and putting together a bigger piece of the puzzle. The more little bit tidbits we get, the better we're able to plug the little gaps of our knowledge. We're never going to know everything, <clears throat> right? I think it's funny because we look at players in a certain way as fantasy managers. Like, why aren't they using him? Why isn't he? Why aren't they treating him the way we want him treated? And and we need to remember. Seeing the tip of the iceberg, not even the tip of the iceberg. You know, we, we hear a lot, right? Like because we're engaged as fantasy managers. I get that. Um, oh, oh, that's coming up, right? Good. I wish I knew more about it. I'm I'm NFL 365 days a year. So I wish I knew more about college. So I'd know more about rookie, then I wouldn't have to play catch up. But the NFL is full time. Um, but it sounds like some excitement. It sounds like they're gaining some traction in the spring league now. They've been talking to you and it seems uh, it seems like they're gaining traction. Any any exciting players that we need to have on our radar, Troy? Get those out there if you, know, if you come across them or add them in coming weeks. Because I am interested in that portion of it. Interested in players. But uh but, but Josh Jacobs going in and getting a real receiving role. I noted in the video that I did for football guys that you know. When you think of Aaron Jones as a vital receiving component, and he was, he had two seasons of 50 or more catches. Josh Jacobs has also had two seasons of 50 or more catches. And they're, I get it, they're totally different players, but like I compare the explosive, uh, you know, run rates. And I think over the last five years, uh, Josh Jacobs has more runs of 10 plus stars than Aaron Jones. I think they make six and seven in the NFL during that five year span 127 for Jacobs, 113 for Jones. You can do a lot of those things. A little more physical presence maybe gives you more of a sledgehammer type player than Aaron Jones, but also with some of that fancy stuff, some of the frill, some of the some of the flair that we're gonna like. You know, I know AJ Dillon's back, but the, you know, talk reporting this week or you know on his return was he's not necessarily a lock to even make the roster. He's back on a one year deal. AJ McCarron. I think that matters only because of who might be in the stands. Am I correct there? Is that a is that a fair assessment? AJ Karen, AJ McCarron. Let's be careful that. Adrian Martinez. I know that name. Okay. NFL backup. All right. <clears throat> All right. Maybe I'll put it on and see what's going on. I know like, I know people out there play the DFS version of this uh, spring football. I do not. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but it, it's, well, I mean, it's not a, you know, I'm like, I'm such an NFL, you know, focused. I mean, I don't get excited about the college game. I know I should, I should be like more well-rounded. I should be more like my yard guys and like make noise year round. You hear them, they'll be gone soon. I don't even know. You guys never hear them as much as I hear them. It sounds like they're like a, a, a hornet's nest is falling in my lap. And I don't think it sounds like that on the show. Anyway, uh, another story I hit on in there was the Calvin Ridley talk this week of Jamar Chase. Uh, I, always know, I always know who the Browns have as a backup. Uh, I don't know if I'm excited about the backup this year. Because they're not Joe Flacco. He is Indy's backup. Interesting situation there. 
uh, Jameis Winston and and crew. They, they have a couple guys. Uh, so I don't know. Not, not enthusiastic about that, but I'm wondering. You know, um, I did my notebook last week. I had a lot of content on Watson in there, and like, can he ever reemerge as the you know that top five fantasy threat he was in Houston? And I, you know, those days might be gone. And the funny thing about us as fantasy managers, oh, look at you go. Troy's in a season long league. Nice, nice. All right. Uh, you know, the, I just, I guess the, you know, overall, uh, we're sitting here in, in looking at uh, it, 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 the Watson situation. Like, you know, I think back to like, how many years did we draft Josh Gordon based on one really good season? And that season never, you know, he was never going to be that guy again. We really think Watson was going to be that guy that he was. And I think there's, I think there's, there's more hope for that than obviously there was for Josh Gordon, right? But because, you know, it's hard to imagine those skills diminishing. We had to how good of a passer he was during his time in Houston. It was phenomenally. And, 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 if, and, and a runner as well, but a, a really good passer. And didn't necessarily have the most, you know. I I think it's fair. Receiving core, like this would be Amari Cooper portion is really good. And then they've added Gary Judy. I'm not sure how enthusiastic I'm about that, but David and Joku. So I don't know. I'm just. I want to hold out hope. I invested in that last year. I had that hope last year. I invested in it last year, and obviously it did not return value. I'm wondering if this isn't the year. I mean, he's getting cheaper every year. You know, quarterback. You know, I want to say late or something. Let me get. Let me check best ball tens. That's the quickest check for me. I got him on best ball tens here at oh, Watson, 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 Watson. Twenty one quarterback. Twenty one going after Caleb Williams. Going just ahead of Jalen Daniels. He's in a rookie sandwich. Baker Mayfield's going after him. I might rather have Mayfield. Gino you know Smith's going after him. I don't know if Gino you know, Mayfield, but you know Smith has the job. Eric Cardinal, he's going at 25. Russell Wilson, Will Levis. I mean, there's upside for Will Levis. There's a good one. Will Levis at 27 versus Deshaun Watson. Unfulfilled potential or uh, unre unfulfilled potential for Watson versus uh, the plan in Tennessee. And I talked about that in my Football Guys video this week. Alvin Ridley getting the Jamar Chase role uh, for that. Offense. I mean, how excited are we? I know the people in Tennessee are very excited. How excited am I? Not overly excited because we'll love us. I don't know what to say. I say it in the football guys video for uh for Calvin Ridley to have a Jamar Chase like season. We need Will Love us to have a Joe Burrow like season. Is that in him? I'm not gonna, you know, I don't want to be totally dismissive of it. The price is not wrong. I mean, I'm getting Will Love us a lot in best ball league, but I don't know that I, I don't know that it's like my desired outcome. He's certainly not a guy I want high on the radar. Probably getting a third quarterback in leagues where I'm drafting three, or if I'm waiting late, you know, later and getting my quarterbacks later, in the second quarterback. I think back to that four touchdown game, DeAndre Hopkins benefiting last year. I mean, that's in him. Is it my expectation. I know in Tennessee the argument is Brian Callahan's bringing a more innovative, forward-looking offense, a, a better offense. Better scheme than we've seen in the past. I won't argue that. I mean, you know, they're pretty innovative with Arthur Smith. I know yes, Arthur Smith. Son of a bitch. No, he was good in Tennessee. And I think Steelers fans are hoping he regains some of that mojo. Maybe he's gonna be like like the 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 Tennessee version of uh of Arthur Smith is the 2013 Josh Gordon. Never gonna see it. A lot of interesting things going on in Pittsburgh. So I I talk about that Ridley situation and what are I are. I get into a little bit on Kyle Pitts. I do think it's really exciting. You know, you're getting him as a as tight end nine or ten in best ball or from eight or ten, right? Double digit ish rounds or right about or heading into that lane. It just seems like the fall off is fast after we get past the certain guys. And there are guys after Pitts that I'm interested in, but the fall off is quick, right? <clears throat> and you're in the group of just guys who may or may not return value. We've all learned our Y'all got a conquo the last year, right? Like, I mean, we're always looking for that. I've been Juwan Johnson a number of times. I mean, we're all waiting for these guys to turn into things that they don't necessarily turn into. Not that the talent isn't there, just like, you know, the right combination of talent, opportunity, 
you know, supporting cast, team, all those things. It's something else. I was listening to my buddies, the Cecil, uh, Cecil Lambie, Sigmund Bloom on the Audible the other day, and they were, they were talking about some of this and got into a discussion of physics and everything. And, and, and like, I love that kind of stuff. Um, but <clears throat> I think the thing we do here with our fantasy assessment is we turn it into single variable equations, right? We look at something as a, well, this is the thing. We have this guy. Why is he? And, and we don't like account uh the complete picture right and so it's so i was listening to some craziness on my youtube and, and it wasn't from porn for a minute or two um it usually is except when scamper sends me some new guitar oh my god <laughs> um the uh i was listening to eric weinstein uh, and he was talking about he's kind of got a theory of relativity that goes past Einstein's and and he is he sitting there talking, he's talking about like, well, Einstein was in a four-dimensional world and this is a 14-dimensional thing, and Einstein's is a small subset of it. And I'm man, so he's thinking about something at a whole different level uh, than obviously anyone else, and obviously me, but but also when you apply it to what we're looking at, we tend to look at these things in a certain level of dimensions, a certain number of dimensions, and and maybe we're never looking right. I keep thinking about that with Stefan Diggs. Where we see this problem, I mean we 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 hook some things up. I mean, it was a bad season. Oh, Joe Brady, his offensive coordinator, they started running more. Well, kind of started sucking before that. I mean, the sucking continued after Brady, but this is kind of a state. We, we tend to put these things into single variable pictures because it's easy, easier for us to get our head around. I think the reality is these are always going to be like way more complex issues than their dynamic play that maybe we'll never understand. I mean, we try. That's what we're doing here. We do every day, right? We sit out there and we, we try and look at them. But I've, I'm trying to look at things a little more broadly. And, and I think what I've tried to oversimplify, I try to oversimplify in one direction, the direction of volume. Volume seems to be an overriding factor. It doesn't always work that. Volume wasn't as great as it has been. But, I mean, he was still the, you know, the leading, the, the leading partner um, in Buffalo. So, so just some, there's some mindless for you. Uh, just like try to try to look at these things, though, as broader situations. And we're taking into account a number of things. The player, his ability, his health, the players around him, the player who's controlling the team, the quarterback, the uh, coach who's running this. Team. I think uh, I'm going to talk about Justin Herbert here in a few minutes because I think that's a big situation. We have a lot of fears around Justin Herbert. But I'm going to go back to my football guys video. Um, <clears throat> talk about Anthony Richards or Kyle Pitt. Increase, you know, we're hoping he turns into the thing, but they, it, for him, you wonder how much of a factor. He talked a little bit about it last year that he, that he suffered the meniscus injury, the meniscus before the year before was still an issue last year. Heard Tony Pollard talk about that, you know, last year, and he seemed to hit stride later in the season. There's another player where, you know, what were the Cowboys previously wanted him to have a limited number of snaps, but he was more effective this year, he got more snaps. Was it that? Was it the injury? Was it Mike McCarthy using him differently than we've seen him used in the past? All of those things is what it was. <laughs> that, that's the answer, right? And us sitting here, you know, we need to be a little more accepting of all these things. They're not trying to put it in one box. Brian Larkin with a question. Oh, a questions here. On the Vikings of Minnesota. Are the Vikings falling to the bottom of the division this year? How much will losing cousins affect their fantasy producers? Ah, that's something else I mentioned in the Football Guys video. Uh, Kevin O'Connell saying that Sam Darnold's best football is not open. And I think that's probably entirely true because he's hockey. Um, but also, I don't think he's going to be the quarterback, or at least not the extended version. I think they'll get a quarterback. Uh, you know, I mean, Justin Jefferson would like you to know he was really good with a bunch of quarterbacks not named Christian last year. Right? Like, so is it the desire? Is it a desired situation? No. Is it, you know, and, and is that why I'm. Justin Jefferson, the uncertainty of quarterback. Is that why I'm seeing Justin Jefferson fall? And when I say fall, I should probably say slip because we're going down to what? Wide receiver three. I'm seeing there's a wide receiver four on occasion. I mean, it's not unusual to see CeeDee Lamb go first, Tyree Kill go second, you know, Jamar Chase go third, and then and then you see Jefferson go fourth. Totally understand that. I mean, objectively speaking, in a, in a vacuum, if they were all playing with a mythical unnamed quarterback who was equally good for all of them, I think we all still pick Justin Jefferson. But we, 
you know, living in it. So, uh, so, so yes, uh, I think I think it does affect their production, and there will be other things that affect that, right? Uh, you know, hearing talk and you know, like we sit here because. 99% of what we talk about this time of year is not going to happen because it can. One thing can happen. One player, one team can draft one player. And it's lying season, so nobody's telling us the real story. I'm hearing things behind the scenes, people talking to people that maybe Drake May is the guy that is the apple of Kevin McConnell's eye. I've heard JJ McCarthy mentioned, and you hear him mentioned a lot. Uh, we go. Penix since his pro day. Penix maybe has the big arm, and, you know, and he's like he, he to me. He seems like the, the most polarizing of all these quarterbacks, you know, in the draft this year. It's, it's interesting to see. Uh, and, and I think this is the more reasonable thing. The Vikings hold on to their round one pick. They should draft Penix. Probably that's and and we'll see what direction they go with that. I mean. Is that is having those two picks? Is that you know the, the initial impression when they got that second pick was they were getting firepower to move up in the first round? And they beat B. They're in that 11, 12, 13 streak with the Raiders and and Broncos, and you know there's that little group of teams that all three are they going to move up with the guy they want? We'll, we'll see how that plays out. Cardinals would be key factors in this. Had some heard some interesting discussions. Take a look on the Audible this week. Talk to Mr. Lamb. Was you know throwing out how maybe the Cardinals would be fine trading down, trading back, not getting Marvin Harrison. Maybe that's not their desired play. Maybe they prefer a guy like Roma Dunze, who is a more physical presence that maybe is something the Cardinals are more interested in. So all this uh, draft talk is 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 very enjoyable. But again, like ninety nine percent of it, I, I, it's fun. But it feels like you're spinning your wheel, right? It feels like the soap opera that never resolved until all of a sudden, you know, on April 25th, we'll start resolving. But until then, things will come and go and people will be blowing smoke. And so, you know, I'm here for it. I'm not necessarily loving that part of it. Um, going back to, you know, and there, there are a number of teams that are, you know, there'll probably be a team that surprises us, right? The Giants surprise six, picking six overall. I've heard the wildest of the rumors are, and the person I'm going to talk about here in a minute, Justin Herbert, being traded to the Commanders in exchange for that. You know, and so who knows? Who knows what kind of nonsense and chicanery will come to pass between now and April 20th? Is it 25th or 25th? I should look at my calendar. It will be, oh, it's the 25th. I had it right. Um, I'll be on Sirius that week. A lot of coverage. I'll be on Sirius later today, people. Hi, I'm Bob Harris. In case you're just tuning in, how are you? Damn glad to see you. Uh, you know my work from football diehards now with football guys. Um, just a little update. The last I talked to him, he seems to be really well. So I'm super excited by that. Uh, uh, seems to be some good news. And again, if you're Andrea, she got the procedure done today. So keep her in your thoughts and mention her in the comments if you'd like to let her know you're thinking about her and maybe go watch the replay of this when she's. Um, oh, yeah. I will be covering the draft for serious. Uh, I'll be doing video videos on night one uh, while the usual crew, Dempsey, man, and I'll be jumping on with them, but I'll be doing videos of each pick on, for the Twitter. And then Friday night, Thursday night, Friday night, I'll the wrap up show solo, 11 to 1 a.m. after the draft. Saturday afternoon, 4 to 7. Sunday that week, we'll be doing our post draft draft. I'll be posting as well. Uh, so check that out. I think uh, there's a pre draft special, me and Dempsey, on Wednesday night before the a lot of draft coverage. A lot of football diehards. Um, Bob Harris, Mike Dempsey on the radio uh, that week. And also today, time zone translation, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so be ready for that. Mike Fiala uh, will be joining us. Uh, there will be Dynasty Talk. We'll be covering. I should look and see who we're covering. The email came in. Uh, we're doing them in draft order. So obviously, you should know this. Oh, uh, who do we got? Who do we got? Uh, A long list of stuff. Ah. Uh, 
going to know who that is. I'll find out. Mm, the guest today. Oh my goodness. Uh, Parker Gabriel, Denver Post. So we'll be talking Broncos and we'll be talking Raiders. Hondo Carpenter from SIL Beyond. Yeah. You know, on Twitter at Daddy's Home. The great one of my favorite. Um, let's see. It is awesome to hear. I'm glad. I, really good news. And, uh, and I'm hoping the best there. Uh, well, RB, right. So, I don't think so. like we're going to overplay this and, and I'm going to write about this a little bit in my notebook column this week. We, you know, we tend to overplay these things. Like his, I love football is a violent sport, contact sport, become a solution sport. Um, I want to say that, you know, the things as I get older, you know, I love, I don't think the, the, the nature of football is not going away. It's always going to remain a violent sport, but if we can take away some plays, like, sure to be destroying the value of players we really love I'm all for that so the horse collar tackle hasn't had any significant impact like i get a big stronger receivers and probably i think you know if anyone's going to benefit it's the big yard after the catch guys right the big body the physical wide receivers going down field with the smaller guys uh not able to you know use that technique. um but i think i think all these things i'll i'll just I'll read you the, the start of the notebook. A little preview for you. Because oh, I think it is true, right? Change is horrible, right? Up until we make it. And, and I think that's, you know, that's the thing. Uh, I think, you know, whether we like it in the short term, I think over the course of time, uh, we'll do this decision. Thing. I, I kind of spin this out and thing. I mean, if you saw the, the numbers the NFL put out this year, there was a big drop in the number of regular season games missed to injury. And a lot of it was due to a drop in lower strains and ACL tears. Uh, 700 fewer missed games in 2023 than 2022. Uh, the league thinks the primary driver of that was a decrease in the, the hit. It, 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 was a, the, the, it was a four-year low in the number of lower, lower extremity strains. And they think that's because they're ramping it up slower in training camp and uh, the preseason. So because those injuries tend to linger. So, and there were way fewer ACL tears, still a lot of them, I think, in the number. Uh, the number is 52 ACL tears, which was down 24% from the past two seasons. Concussions remain about the same. So, <clears throat> Wendy Early in the house. So, yeah, so I think, you know, Jim, you know, there is no simple answer. Might there be, you know, changes? I don't, uh, maybe. I don't think they'll be significant enough that we'll know. The significance of not losing uh, Mark Andrews for an entire season or the bulk of it a season, you know, will outweigh whatever, you know, changes or slight adjustments to the other numbers. So I'm okay. I'm okay. This could change. And I think that is, that has been my, uh, I'm very old to be surprised to learn. And so over the course of time, you realize that as things change, I mean, you know, we, we fear change right up until we make it. And you go, ah, hell, that's not so bad. In fact, it's kind of good. So that's what I'm hoping for here. I want to be touting the Justin Herbert talk. But I want to hit on a couple of quarterback ideas. Uh, first, you know, I think those top three teams, obviously, Caleb Williams, that seems to be making the cake right now that he's going to Chicago. I don't see another outcome happening, but if it does, it does. Uh, number two, then Washington, they make a trade or they satisfied with whatever's left over the quarterback the next year. Caleb Williams, the only one they wanted. I think a lot of people connected that dot, you know, when uh, Cliff Kingsbury was hired as offensive coordinator. I don't know that that's necessarily why he's there. Uh, unless they're moving to number one, which I don't think is going to happen. So, uh, number three is the Patriots. And they're, they have Jacoby Brissett, who has been pretty damn competent, right? Like, could you get through a season with Jacoby Brissett if you had other needs? I know uh, I don't see Royals. I know that would not be his desired outcome. Um, I kind of like to see them reset and go with a like, different things. I think they have done a Caden DeGangle, the more athletic you know, guy, and work into that. But they have a lot of these there, too, uh, at least on the offensive side. Well, they've got a lot of holes. You know, are they going to take the Chicago route? You bring in a talented young player at quarterback as the Bears do with Justin Fields, and then they'll give him the, the support and firepower he needs down the field to, to excel. 
I hope it's more of a threat with early calls in preseason for Memphis. I, I probably so. I, and and that is, you know, that's something that can't be great point, Mister Scampers. Is like a lot of times the real enforcement of these rules comes in the form of fine. Man, they were Galen last year, man. A lot of rumbling in the NFL. I was thinking, guy like Derrick Henry dragging a safety yards before he goes down. Uh, like, I mean, yeah, yeah but, but I don't think it'll be significant. I mean, I think there'll be plays, and like, there are already plays where Derrick Henry is dragging. So, you know, not to be just the point, but I, I, yeah, I don't know how to I mean, people tend to come up with, you know, use different techniques, right? So. And sometimes you still see a horse collar tackle because that's the only way a player can make the play. I mean, I do think that for, you know, I, I, if you weren't following this situation closely, the uh, Players Association, the NFLPA, was against it. Well, why would the NFLPA be against it? Half their players are Maybe they don't like the whole idea. And, and players in general, you know, are not big on removing physicality or some of the physical aspects of the game. And um, this is a whole, you know, I don't want to get off on this tangent completely, but I talk about it a lot. It's the physics of the game, right? <clears throat> it's pretty simple. Bigger, faster, force, increases, you know, acceleration times mass, all those things, you know? I mean, it's like we've got to come to grips with the fact that while the muscular musculature and the, the speed increases and the speeds increase, the, the joints and the bones, we're not getting more bone mass. We're not getting, you know, cartilage and ligaments are not, you know, changing, right? We're not altering that. We're altering the pieces around them and, and hurling them down the field at greater speeds. You know, it's, it's no wonder, you know, it's, a, it, it's, it's wise to mitigate the risk to that, in my estimation. And, you know, you see, I always thought about a guy like Calvin Johnson, <clears throat> Who you know six five for the four two forty? Um, that's really taken very thirty five pounds. You see these giant receivers go up super high for balls to come down and land on their ass. I mean, it's a big drop, man. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, Zare, my man. I wonder if Henry's present results in less rush attempts for Lamar while increasing higher yardage throws. That would be interesting. That's you know that to me would be a bigger factor. <clears throat> You know, that's a big factor, right? I'm interested in that. I'm, I'm going to talk about Justin Herbert here. I was looking, you know, part of that was looking back at what Lamar Jackson did with Greg Roman as his play call. It was awful. I had whole notion that Greg Roman is coming into Los Angeles. And, and, and not without reason, but, but also, I mean, we could say, like, oh, wow, in 2019, <laughs> Lamar Jackson threw 36 touchdowns, had, you know, threw well over – Thousand yards, not four thousand, right? Well, I mean, her, you know, mobility that were high end, Randy, but Jackson also ran for twelve hundred yards. I will see a little season high for a quarterback, and, and in addition to throwing thirty six touchdowns, he ran for seven. And <clears throat> Justin Herbert is not going to be Mark Jackson. He's mobile. He's not immobile, but he's not like you know, he's in between. You know, like, like Colin Kaepernick had a good success in this offense. I don't know that that's the ideal plan for Herbert. So we'll see what they do here. That's part of what's fueling the rumors of a trade of Herbert and maybe the acquisition of J.J. McCarthy, who Jim Harbaugh would like to know. He's the best quarterback in the draft. I think Zari, we might probably have a better number than I do, but, <clears throat> but the idea for me is, you know, you look back and, like, Alex Smith had, relatively speaking, had relative success in the Harbaugh offense because he was more efficient, made more big plays. And I think that's the, you know, kind of what is already saying about, <clears throat> about uh, Lamar is, you know, when you have a stronger rushing attack, and that was the notion with Alex Smith, you had a better rushing attack and, and, and you were able to make better plays down the field. And I think there was another thing floating around out there on Twitter, <clears throat> which did make sense is the 49ers would get early leads and then nurse those leads by rushing the ball. So there's that. Williams gains mass and higher yields. Well, towards the church. <laughs> yes, that seems like reasonably fair. Mike Williams, uh, <clears throat> my concerns about him in that state field are probably overstated, but concerns. 
Uh, but yeah, so Justin Herbert, you're wondering for a guy who, you know, the numbers have been, you know, been past heavy offenses for him, right? You're looking at the numbers for him and you just wonder how in a team, you know, uh, Matthew Berry pointed out this week, the, the passing numbers, uh, he's not been great. Right? And Denny Carter had something on this as well. Uh, but I want to say it's like, uh, what is it? The 49ers never had more than, I don't think they ranked higher than 29 in uh, pass attempts. And that, that's going to be a problem. Herbert's average more than 4,300 yards, 28 touchdown passes, 66% of his passes over the course of the season. Thrown for 5,000 yards in a season once. Has at least 30 touchdown passes. Twice in the you wonder if those numbers are going to be, you know, sustainable. I mean, well, no, you don't wonder. You, I, you don't want, you wonder how. It would be a better better comment there, uh, how they would be sustainable. Uh, in, in that. Uh, let's see, 49ers. Uh, uh, Roman's offenses are ranked 27th or lower in passing offense in eight of his 10 seasons running offenses. Uh, during his time together with Arwa, San Francisco ranked second in rush rate and 31st in pass attempts. I think Denny Carter added that by saying they never ranked higher than 29th. Or, I mean, like it's not been good. And uh, I saw Pat Thorman added to that, you know, kind of noting that, that even when he had Andrew Luck, they never, in Stanford, they never passed, you know, average 30. I went out and looked it up. He did not average 30 attempts a game, not even low. So, so efficiency is going to be important for Justin Herbert. But here's the thing about Justin Herbert is, is the, is the price right now. He's, a, he's like not going as a, well, barely a starting quarterback Bring up best ball times. Justin Herbert is quarterback eleven. I think it's even later in under. Let me take a quick look. Where are you? Come to me. Quarterback thirteen on underdog. He's going outside. I mean, like, so where's your interest level, peoples, in drafting Justin Herbert? Are you, are you thinking you'll add some shares because he's a value? I feel like right now I'm avoiding him. There's just there are plenty of avenues I can use to navigate around him that seems to be my approach right now maybe it'll change maybe the price will be further depressed and that'll be the determining factor for me if the price is further depressed right now i think he's probably priced right you know i think i guess so we talk about this a lot here is you know our fears tend to we tend to overplay our fears right because what we do we're people it's our job oh 304 in a best ball oh i saw that draft uh, three or four in the space. Super Bowl. So I think that's pretty good. That's pretty good. In a super flex, that's pretty good. I'm trying to remember uh, the one I covered. They went really quick too. I'm doing a number of super flex best balls right now. Let me go take a look at one that's ongoing and see where he went. Hmm, Herbert went two, went two oh four in this one. So that's a little earlier. Went ahead of guys like went ahead of Purdy. So I think that might be a little. I think Purdy will go ahead of him a lot. Off my maybe to a probably will Trevor Lawrence, Williams. So yeah, I mean that's a little early. I I feel like two. I feel like I feel like I would rather get him where you got him, Dame. That's for sure. His price will go up if they add anything besides King Disley. Come on, man. Come on. Ugh. Disley will be dominant. Uh, so maybe with the fifth pick overall, maybe they just stand pat or if they add pick. But I mean, you know, a Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors. I know Kevin Coleman wrote about that guy on football guys uh, this week. You know, and that would alleviate some concerns. I think it would. Also, some interesting talk about what the Cardinals will do. See, this is this is the point. I don't know if he's a pick for me. All right, I you know, but but I'm watching for that. And, and if he is, I think there are the, 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 and like like long term, I totally agree. Like a dynasty is a dynasty investment, 100. <clears throat> percent But I think there are other quarterbacks that are a little better as quarterback twos without the uncertainty. Like, but he's right in that same range. Totally not. Yeah, not this is this is the ideal situation, right? This is what we're always looking for. Players who are capable of outperforming 
or who have in the past outperformed. And because of circumstances that we really can't 100% foresee, we're downgrading them based on our fears and expectations. Not unrealistic fears necessarily, uh, but probably overblown fears because fears probably all are almost always overblown. So fair point there for sure. Man. So we'll see about that. Um, so right now I don't, I don't know if I have any shares of him um, just because there are players I'm more interested in. Anthony Richardson, I'm looking at you, young man. By the way, that's one of my news bits uh, this week. Guys, video, and it does sound like he's on track to play. Look, I'm gonna right. One of the reasons is is because there's a whole raft of guys, including Justin Herbert. I'm gonna feel okay about if they're my quarterback too, and, you know. And I mean that goes down. We were talking about you know, Mayfield, Gino. I mean, hell, Matt Stafford, Jared Goff are going you know well after him. Kirk Cousins is going after him. So. Like I can double up a quarterback really easily to get a guy that I'm perfectly comfortable with as my starter. If something happens to Richardson, I will not get. Oh, no, like totally. Like I don't even live near one, and I'm horrified of them. They're a spirited creature, very large. Fair. <clears throat> What's the deal in like Colombia where like? Pablo Escobar brought hippos in, and now they're like a thriving community of hippos that are eating people or something. Like, I'm overstating that for sure. Totally gone up. But there are hippos like running amok in South America. Pablo Escobar had a zoo and they escaped. What a world we live in. All right, if you've got questions, hit me up. I will take whatever you got. Um, <clears throat> Wanted to talk a little bit about Joe Mixon as well. I, well and this is fortuitous because Zari, my colleague at Football Guys, right here, is obedient. And you know, he did a study recently that I've cited in one of my articles. Uh, and and you know, the, one of the reasons he moved away from him was breakaway, which is not good, right? And it's not been. And, and the compounding problem for him has been he hasn't gotten the volume we want. Now he goes to Houston where he's going to get the volume. Right. Like we've seen a series of, I mean, I don't know, whatever we thought of Damian Pierce two years ago, we didn't think of him last year. But, but, uh, but Devin Singletary, has we ever viewed him as a high end prospect, but he will, given the volume over the final 10 games, and he was a dominant force in fantasy. Is it possible Joe Mixon getting that kind of volume can be that kind of player? Right. The, the kind of player like who's right now going, I think, as running back in the team. So uh, back half running back two <clears throat> at a super reasonable price. I think I think he should not be overlooked in draft for that reason. <clears throat> and I think very, you know, he kind of got me writing about this because I saw him commenting on that study and I thought it was like super interesting. And it is. We've heard the Bengals talk about it all on And one of their big complaints was they lacked explosiveness. They were, uh, <clears throat> they were 27th. I want to say I'm just like spitballing it. But did well down in the bottom third of the league in breakaway run rate last year. So they wanted to change that. And they think uh, Zach Moss helps with that. Chase, Chase Brown probably helps them with that a little bit. Um, and the answer here is yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. So since, yeah, I, I do like Pittman. And I'm drafting him a little ahead of ADP. Up for that reason. Right? I think, uh, yes, that is a fair assessment. Joe Mixon is a better version. And, and so, and, and like you're paying for him too. G Gus, Gus Edwards is being, and, but I will, I think that's the, the right now, if you're drafting in this moment, Gus Edwards as running back 40, right? Is like, okay, well, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take my chances there because we've seen what he's capable of and with a shared workload, even, even assuming they draft somebody. <clears throat> And, and I don't, I'm, I'm with you, Scampers. I'm not 100% sure they will. Joe Horst uh, said this like last week that like they see him as a feature back and some of his best seasons came under Greg Roman, his most effective season. And he's always shared with someone. So we'll see if he shares. Um, <clears throat> but, I, but I don't disagree with this, right? But I mean, the, the, the difference between the two is relative value, running back 18 or running back 40. Let's see if, let's see, I'm throwing that number out there because that's the most recent number I 
if it's still in. Maybe he's rising up a little bit. It would not be like a total surprise if he is. I think he probably should. There's five. All right, here we are. Gus Edwards. He's risen to 39 on, on underdog. Who's going ahead of him? Jonathan Brooks is going ahead of him. Devin Singletary is going ahead of him. Chase Brown is going ahead of him. Zach Moss, Trey Benson is going ahead of him. Ty J. Spears. Zamir White is under price. Zamir White is crazy value here running back three. We'll get into that another time. But there you have it. I mean, that's that's a pretty uh, you know that's a pretty good value. So I, I totally think Joe Mixon is a great value moment as things stand now. But 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 I think that's it's also fair to say that yes, definitely worth taking a shot at that. It's definitely fair to say also though that Mix is less likely to have competition for prices at any point this year than uh, than Gus Edwards. And I don't know, you know, Gus Edwards touchdown making with me. So both those guys. Like if if I went into if I was drafting wide receiver heavy or passing heavy teams early in best ball, if my two running backs. I started out with where Joe Mixon, and then I didn't get one until Gus Edwards was the free right now. As things stand, as things stand, to be determined, it might change. Okay, totally will change. It only changes every day, man. We're, you know, like, like things happen, and we hear tidbits, and that's part of the fun of drafting this time of year. You can take advantage of moments. I landed some Mike Williams in the day, you know, day he went with the Jets. You get some fortuitous timing, some of these. I know Dempsey's in so many. My serious XM co-host, Mike Dempsey, is drafting so many. Like during NFL drafts, when we're covering NFL drafts, I'm sitting next to him. I mean, he's drafting through the draft. He's drafting rookies based on you know, on, on real time information. That's going to be a lot. My automatic coffee mug not heating my coffee. Yes, I'm fancy. My coffee was not hot. There was no excuse for that. But <clears throat> I fixed the problem. I've troubleshot it in real time. Look at me go. Multitasking like a king. <clears throat> Something's going on here? No. Nope. 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 Nothing going on. I'm waiting for breaking news so we can all write an article together. We're doing that. At some point, we're going to do that. I'm still mad that I didn't think of it last time. When I got mad, I had to write an article and I was doing this. Son of a bitch. <clears throat> All right, what else we got going on? Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray. What do we think about Kyler Murray? What do we think about the Cardinals? I think Kyler Murray came in last year um, and exceeded my expectations based on based on a guy who ran the air raid offense since he's been a small child, coming into a more traditional offense that he had no familiarity with and performing reasonably well, despite not having a great supporting cast. I think the supporting cast is going to be better. Is it going to be Marvin Harrison Jr. better? We will see. Interesting talk on the Audible this week about you know, maybe Roma Dunsey being a better choice or a different choice and Monty Austin Fort moving down and moving back up. I got bad news for Brian Larkin. I hate to say this. So, Brian, I think you're just joining the fun. So, Emil Cattle has been forced to retire for health reasons. So, that's why I'm now with Football Guys. You can go subscribe there at any time. I will go find all my work there. Um, there will be a pro podcast. I will not be part of it, but the uh, magazine, the website have been sold. I don't know all of that, uh, the website portion of it. Um, but, uh, so Emo had uh, was diagnosed with cancer uh, last year, and uh, <clears throat> and so uh, he's forced to step away. So I was forced to move on. And, uh, found a you know horrible circumstance, fantastic. So I uh, hope you'll follow me along over there, football guy. Sign up for the free email, if nothing else, and check out, see what it's all about. You get it every day in your inbox, uh, and you can subscribe at any time. Big deal. Um, <clears throat> great contributors like Zare Kansabini is there, many, 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 including me, Bob Harris. Um, with the wave of quarterbacks, yes, Aaron Rodgers is the value right now. Aaron Rodgers is going to say as quarterback. 
well in the quarterback two range. I want to put a number on it because it's it always you know like I I, I mean I, and it's not that I don't get it. quarterback nineteen. He's rising up a little bit. People are becoming increasingly confident. He's got to be pretty, like he's got a pretty good setup and stay healthy. I think he'll be fine. But you know that is a guy you play. Aaron Rodgers quarterback twenty. So eight. So twenty on underdog. Nineteen on best ball tens. Matthew Stafford available in that same range. Kirk Cousins is quarterback 17, still on underdog. He's insane. Jared Goff, quarterback 16. Trevor Lawrence, quarterback 15. Caleb Williams, quarterback 14. Justin Herbert, 13. Tua Tonga Valoa, 12. Brock Purdy, 11. I'm looking on underdog at the moment. Uh, Kyler Murray, 10. The player we were just talking about, and we'll talk a little more about. Jordan Love, Dak Prescott. Who is? But, you know, I talked about this the last couple shows briefly right and uh email is improving I'm told. He, sounds like, he sounds very optimistic it told me he was gaining a little weight I'm very excited to hear the good news um but <laughs> small talk to really um uh, so i want to say the quarterback there's always value there and that's why i'll take a chance on a richardson or or whatever. And Zari's point was, you know, the penny stock kind of situation. Seems like there's a lot of penny stock. And that's why I don't have because I think some of those guys going after him, like I feel really comfortable with either job security or injury. And B, uh, you know, solid weekly, solid enough weekly production. So so that, and if there was a dearth of those, I'd be more interested in her. There's a whole batch of those guys. And until we get a little information, maybe one draft be enough to change my whole out, right? They draft a super high end receiver. Go back in the running. Now, Joe Horace is talking about playing Johnston. Um, we'll have Matt Waldman on here. Rookie scouting portfolio day is Monday, April 1st. Uh, get your rookie scouting portfolio, mattwaldman.com. Right, Matt will be on with me soon. He'll be on the radio with me next Saturday, and he'll be on here. You can hear the Feel It or F It podcast with Matt every Monday, by the way. So, Dial into that this week. It will be. We'll undoubtedly talk about him. Well, true story. I and mean, boy, there is some stackable assets, man. Based because these quarterbacks are going so cheap, and and like in best ball, I'm forcing it. You know, like I'm forcing the stacks as possible. In draft, I'm not really. You know, you don't force the stack, or at least let me rephrase. There's a difference between. I'm not looking to stack them season long right i just don't want that that many eggs in in the basket every week but pairings yeah and there's a lot of natural pairings that are available when you get this range of cheap quarterbacks you can invest in the you know and receiving asset early and and land that quarterback easily without you know putting the rest of your team at risk so i like that idea quarterback one for jordan love i think that's like that's where he's gonna live right now there's no doubt about it I think a lot of this you cannot overlook the Matt LaFleur factor. The addition of Josh Jacobs as well. Um, the offense, let's see how that goes. David Bakhtari, we didn't see much of him anyway. Are we worried that he's going away? I don't know. Is, is he really there? Um, so anyway, I do think that you know that there's a lot to like about Jordan Love. And it goes back to last year. I talk about it all the time when we talk about him, but and this is <clears throat> it's possible the Packers know what the F they're doing. I mean, like everything they said last year, all the things they said about Jordan Love. And, and like, we didn't know anything about Jordan Love. And that goes back to what I talked about in the beginning of this show. We sit here and we base things on a very narrow, very narrow band of eyewitness information. Again, right? Like we see Sundays, we see a guy make a couple good plays. Why isn't he playing more? Well, probably because coaches are up about 20 hours a day. They have better information than we do. Right? Like, so, so. You know, take that into account. Like, but also, like, when a team is telling us something about a player, and they were telling us a consistent story about Love last year or after Rogers left. I mean, it was the same, and to the point where at one point when Brian Luke was asked why they didn't land, a, you know, a, a veteran free agent at wide receiver to add some experience and you know to the receiving core, his whole answer was like really relevatory we want to build our young talented receiving with our young talented quarterback oh well there's a great idea. 
And I mean, right now we're all. What, what's the biggest issue for us as fantasy managers dealing with Green Bay? Is well, what's your receiver do I draft? For me, it's the Chiefs right now because they're all like on a similar field. Like I, I do think Reed, Jaden Reed, is the guy that probably looks the most dangerous, but only because as uh, our buddy Mike Florio Jr. Uh, calls him, uh, you know, uh, Michael F. Florio from NFL Network, and you're so constant Debo, right? Because he gets those rushing he's got more physical presence. But after that, this week, the work trying to keep himself healthy. <clears throat> I hope it works. The fact that he has to do it, like, is a worry. And you guys know me. I'm injury agnostic. I don't care, you know. But but there's a difference between being chronically injured in a chronic injury and hamstring could be a chronic situation. He's, you know, injured all the time, like, it's a toe and then a knee and then a this and then a that. He's pretty much hamstring. So I hope he gets a handle on that. But until then, I mean, which of those guys am I drafting? Probably the one I'm getting the latest, Dontavian Wicks. Come on down. I like by the end of the year, if Dontavian Wicks is Dontavian Wicks, the wide receiver one in Green Bay, I mean, shock me? No. I'm getting him as the deepest piece of that offense. I don't know. I'm kidding. But there, you know, I mean, you know, that's that's an approach. I mean, like when you're trying to, and, and Jaden Reed is going fairly early. I want to say people are pretty confident in him. I mean, I'm pretty confident in him. I don't know if I'm confident in him as the world. Let's just Jaden Reed, come on down. With pick number wide receiver 33. I mean, that's not insane. I mean, like, you know, wide receiver three price or that guy's going in the same. Roma Dunze is going ahead of him, by the way. Christian Curtin going ahead of him, by the way. That seems like a problem. Terry McLaurin. How the might call him. Alvin Ridley after him. Brian Thomas Jr. after him. Jordan Addison, Marquise Brown. I mean, there's, you know, Jaden Reed's in pretty, you know, to me, pretty off the company for a receiving core that seems like it's not fully defined at this point. I know. I'm talking to Romeo Dubs. Yeah, Mel. And by the way, again, if you're all just tuning in, uh, Andrea, our friend, is having a procedure, take some good stuff for her and put it out there in the universe. Uh, well, uh, I'm sorry. I've got to stop at the end of it. I need you to come on Saturdays because you ask the questions all the time when I'm uh, when I'm on the hot seat and I have guests and I'm trying to go through the guest thing and and like this is a great place for you. This is where I ask to answer every damn question. Ask me a couple questions really quick before I have to go. All right, JC. Saturdays, ask me anything. It's every week I'll be back here next Saturday. I'll be back here this coming Wednesday as well. But it's not an ask me anything. I mean, you could ask questions then, JC. But if I don't get to them right away, that's why. Because I have a guest I have a little bit of agenda. And I want to get through things that we've set up to talk with the guests about. And uh, we do, you know, we're going to have questions. We'll probably get them to later in the show. So I apologize if you missed out today. <clears throat> and if we aren't right on your questions. Russell Wilson or Justin Fields? I think Fields will take over during the season. Sorry, I might have some thoughts on that. Sorry, he's been working on an article about that very thing. Um, and I think it is interesting and some of the complaints about him. Look, I think the just uh, the evolution alone tells you something here, in, right? Where we went from Russell Wilson, listen to Zara, you know, where we went from Russell Wilson as the sure starter when Kenny Pickett was the number two to now he has the full position. And Justin Fields is there. Things change. It's possible. Ruling nothing out at this point. But yeah, I think the the evolution there, uh, JFC, is telling. And Zare will have an article out soon. Tells a little more about you know some of the some of the in Justin's game whether they can be turned around and. and turn it so, I think you've probably. You're probably more correct than not there, Jason. I know Zari is, so I'll go with that. <clears throat> so interesting stuff. Again, uh, you'll find my Fantasy Notebook article will be out probably my late Sunday night, early Monday morning. Catch me later today uh, on the uh, Series XM Fantasy Sports Radio channel with MC. Uh, we'll be covering, uh, what did I say? The uh, Broncos and the uh, Raiders. Uh, it's 11 to 12, I want to say. Or is it 12 to 13? 
It's 11, 12. So it's 11, 13. I mean, it's not 11. Hmm. All right. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Appreciate you listening to the radio show. Mike Fiala will be on, too. There will be Dynasty Talk. You can bet your bippy on that. And uh, thank you all for coming again. I appreciate your time and your attention uh, on these live streams every Saturday. And check my uh, football guys workout, footballguys.com. You can subscribe to the free email. Rookie draft man is out. Version 2.0 for the elite call. Subscribers is free. Version 1.0 available to everyone to sign up for the email. The free damn email. Uh, and then check out my videos there every Friday. I'll be putting out a, kind of a weekly summary of the news, a short digestible thing so you can catch up in short order if you haven't been paying attention. Uh, I'll just write a feed on all the most important happenings in my fantasy world. No uh, we will talk to you all very soon. And yes, get well soon, Andrea. Appreciate you. And we'll talk to you all Wednesday night or later this afternoon if you got the radio. Goodbye.